What's going on? It's episode two of the Creative Spotlight, presented by Lane Brody. I'm here with Dick Kid. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Good to see you. And uh, this is special. I need an ashtray if anyone sees one. This is special because me and Jamie go way back, um, second grade, actually. A long time, a long time. I want to say... There's been gaps, gaps in between, though. Yeah, gaps gaps in between, gaps in my memory. We kind of pick up. We go we go for a long time, then we pick up. It's like a... Right where we left off. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the first time... <laughs> it's like time, an ex coming back together, I guess you could say. I want to say second grade, we were on the same soccer team? Yeah, we were on the same soccer team. We had um, a really, really sweet woman as our teacher, Mrs. Benjamin. She... I think she passed away actually, unfortunately, a few years ago. But she was a very sweet woman. You remember Miss Benjamin? Of course. Yeah, she was very. Well, I don't know why I said of course, but yeah, I Mom do... Hillier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah, Shout really, you really sad. Yeah, she was, she was, she was fun. I don't, I don't personally remember too much about her, but she was a, she was like a sweet grandmother type, you know, just a real. For sure. Caring a loving figure. Soul. Yeah. That was a, good a gentle place. soul. Yeah. It was a good place. Oh, yeah. So. Well, well, was it a good place? I, I don't remember if it was a good place or not, actually. <laughs> Still up pretty big. Still up pretty big. So, uh, you got a lot going on right now with yeah. Instagram and whatnot. A uh, couple different things worth giving an eye. A yeah. Look at. Yeah. We got, we, I, we, yeah, we're working on a few platforms. We have a lot of, we got a lot of different stuff coming. We, um, so I'm still doing the WAN stuff. I got my buddies. We doing, we're doing the WAN stuff. Um, so what is that? Yeah, WAN. Basically picture this, right? You, you, um, well, let me go back a little bit further. I guess basically WAN is, well, so it's our brand. It's a, it's a brand that me and my friends started. And um, we, it basically started on the idea of how can we have a fantastic time in any given situation? And... You know, it kind of, we start off like um, very, as just putting out crazy videos and uh, travel videos and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And now, um, now we still, I think it took us a long time to sort of define what our brand was because we made videos that didn't necessarily reflect the brand all the time. Our, our mm -hmm. slogan is, is summer ain't over. And the whole idea behind that is that um, summer, we, everybody's had a great time in the summer, right? Like you hang out with your friends um, and we wanted to create that. This right. summer was interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this summer. This was summer. Well, this summer was one for the books for sure. <laughs> um, but we basically wanted to create some sort of um, positive influence throughout the entire year that was always circling back to summer. And so mm. our idea was to do that with a brand that reflects summer creative content, and. Um, I think we have done that for the most part, but definitely, I definitely yeah. get a positive vibe from all the videos. Yeah. Um, first of all, they're crazy. They're like viral moments. It's like you never know what you're gonna get. Right. Yeah. It's it's very videos. unpredictable for sure. What yeah. in, what what inspires some of those? Is that you? Is that also well, yeah? It's it's what's well, I think I feel like there's something very unique that happens when I really feel like when when my buddy and I Joe get together, there's definitely something unique that happens, and I can't. I don't know what it is exactly. I, it's been really hard for me to pinpoint, but I feel like we always find ourselves in these very unpredictable situations and these, like, like just very odd, dude, very, very odd situations. Um, for example, like we were in uh, Chinatown, New York City uh, okay. over, over winter and um, we so saw- last, last year? Yeah, end of, end of last year. Yeah, like December, like mid-December. And- um, and we're in we're in Chinatown, and like this isn't a funny this isn't really like a funny crazy story or anything, but we, we just uh, like you know I think we just see some like we were walking we saw this empty apartment and we just kind of went in it, and uh, it's kind of an odd sort of thing to do, but we ended up meeting some really amazing people and like kind of starting a friendship there, and uh, it just ha I feel like whenever we go whenever we travel we get ourselves in these like really weird situations that. You're still in touch with these? Yeah, yeah. I'm so, well, uh, we're in touch a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, through DMs, yeah, that kind of thing. It goes down in the DMs. It goes down in the DMs, yeah. Exactly. But that's Wham. That's that's a little bit about Wham. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I know Joe Tosin. He's definitely, you both have 
brilliant minds as far as like oh thank you yeah well you as well creative thank you thank you um and you were saying it has that positive vibe which i definitely agree with Uh, Mm -hmm. it also has like that comedic vibe yeah um what really inspires like i guess the comedic side of it oh the comedic side is that just to be positive still so so i think the comedic side is like i love comedy because well obviously you have to be careful but you can, you can, you know, like there's, there's certain comics who can do things with their art that really reflect what they're experiencing. And not all comedy has to be super lighthearted and super like, in, like, did you see Dave Chappelle's 826? Absolutely. I mean, dude, that was a genius. Like it wasn't, it wasn't funny. It wasn't, but it was, it definitely had, there was definitely a comedic aspect to it, a comedic mm-hmm. brilliance. And it didn't necessarily have to reflect a po- he wasn't feeling positive, but that's okay. Like that's exactly how he was supposed to be feeling. Yeah. And it reflected that in the content. Yeah, so, I think he executed that. Yeah, perfectly. perfectly. Amazing. Was, yeah. Um, um Dave Chappelle is definitely number one for me. My yeah. favorite. He's a he's huge, he's definitely a huge inspiration uh, for who, sure. Who who are some specific comedians that my, or just people in general? People inspire me. Whether it's um, comedians or not. Yeah, I think you could say Jesus. You know who's someone I, I don't. My content is very different from this person, but they're I love how quick they are. Is are you familiar with Hassan Minaj? No. He, he he's uh he he actually hosted the uh, uh he he did the Donald Trump roast at the um White House Correspondence Center where Trump didn't like didn't even show up or anything, but it was hilarious. Like it was it was like um you know he he was actually on the Daily Show with John Stewart. And uh, give me uh, that name again. It's Hassan Minaj. Um, but he's a super funny guy. He's from like, I think he's from like David, uh, Davis, California or something. Oh um, my gosh. You know this guy? I know. Dude, yeah. Dude, this guy's hilarious. He's so funny. Yeah. Um, um, he's amazing. He does do some politically. Yeah, stuff. for he's, sure. Yeah. He's a genius. For sure. He's a genius, dude. He's an absolute yeah, genius. He did, wow. uh, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's done a lot of really, really, really funny stuff. So he's one of the people that um, inspires you. Anyone else? Yeah. I mean, or? I would say John Stewart for sure. John Stewart, even though my, my content is very different from John Stewart, I think John Stewart is like, like comedically genius. I love like his, I mean, he's not really doing too much stuff now, but when he was on the daily show, just like it was, oh, Trevor Noah, for sure. Trevor Noah is huge for me. I like Trevor Noah a lot. All, pretty much all those daily show, uh, daily yeah, show guys. Yeah, you're choosing a lot of. Yeah. See, I was thinking of comedians like Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Oh, for sure, Will Seth Ferrell. Rogan, yeah, so I think, uh, I definitely think also Martin too. Lawrence, yeah, yeah. So, so Jim Carrey is probably Jim number Carrey. one in terms of like my actual style. Mm-hmm. Jim Carrey's number one. And then I would say Kyle Mooney, who's on, um, he's on a, uh, Saturday Night um, mm-hmm. Live. Uh, him and Beck are pretty funny as well. So I'd say, yeah, Jim Carrey, Kyle Mooney, they're super, they're definitely a big inspiration for me. Um, okay, cool. Uh, you got any comedic movies? Com- oh, that I like, like like my favorites. Give me some. Oh, uh, dude! I mean, I think Super Bad is like one of the best comedic. Movies. Super Bad is amazing. Uh, Hot Rod's pretty good. Hot Rod. Uh, Step Brothers for Super sure. Bad. Step Brothers. Um, I feel like oh yeah, you and Nick. Yeah, Nick, yeah, 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 yeah. You kind of lived a real life Step Brothers. Like, I did. I sort of yeah, I sort of lived out a real life Step Brothers scenario actually. Just maybe half their age. What's yeah? What's crazy because when me and Malik went to this went to high school with this kid Nick, and we graduated, and then my dad ended up marrying his mom, and actually, what's kind of also a, a sort of a fascinating uh, part to this is that he's actually also dating my ex girlfriend. So see her a lot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But it, it's good. I I mean they're very nice. I love I like them a lot, but. Yeah, it's an interesting scenario. So, well, yeah. You know, you guys dated in high school, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. high school was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Time heals. Ball. Time yeah. heals all. Time heals everything, yeah. Um, and that's not true at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's far from it, actually. Um. <laughs> you know, it's tough. Uh, but I think... I'm uh, feeling oh, heartbroken. Sorry. No, 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 I wasn't at all. Um, I mean, it was like, honestly, you know, she's a very, very sweet girl, and my stepmother's... He's very kind. Um, so no, yeah, it's all in the past. So. More so saying when you do feel heartbroken. When I do, yeah. I'm going to ask you a tough question. I want to know some songs. Oh, wow. You okay. go to. I want to get yeah. vulnerable. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's what do does it. Jamie listen to when he cries in the shower? Oh, man. Uh, when I cry in the shower. Do you cry in the shower? 
I don't cry in the shower. I feel like I cry in like different places. Not maybe not the shower. Maybe so like the car, me? like driving in the car, maybe okay. or something. Do you have music playing? Yeah. Maybe like um, J Cole. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I, yeah. So like like J, J yeah J Cole's like Lost Ones or something. That's a good one. That's a good one. I feel like I definitely kind of can weirdly. Uh, I can't really relate with that at all, but I I for some reason I do tend to listen to that when I'm sad. Um, you know, I'd probably we, say. Let me think. Yeah, probably like a lot of like sad Eminem stuff or like um, maybe like some like sad Frank Ocean, maybe. I don't know. Um, you know, it's a good, oh, maybe like Chum, Earl Sweatshirt. That's a pretty dark, that's a pretty dark song. That's a good one. Um, you know Walk on Water, Cozy Tapes too. No, I don't know that. I shed a tear of joy when I hear really? that thing, I tell you. That's a beautiful song. Really? It's good? Yeah. Well, I guess I was just, I kind of asked you this, wait, who, who are you listening to now? Because I, I kind of asked... You're, I loved your new song, and it was it had a very like. I, I can't really have I don't know how to describe it, but like I feel like it definitely had like, an X vibe, but it also had like sort of like a, kind of like X combined with like a Lil Peep, so I don't know if you listen to Lil Peep at all, but it's very it kind of had that the heaviness and the depth to it and the, sort of like the, the the darkness, but I, it was really um. It I think it was very similar to X. Maybe what do you think? Is that an inspiration um, for you? Because I... <sighs> no, I get inspired more so by execution, uh -huh. um, rather than just a single artist. Growing up, obviously like Kanye, Drake, Jay Z, uh, even like people's latest Big Sean. Uh, well, didn't Ant get you on Common? Didn't Ant? I mean, yeah, I guess I could credit him. He definitely yeah. got me. He got me hip to so much music, honestly. Yeah, Ant's a gold mine for me. Um, teaching me things he's really like a big brother but uh, i've really been entrenched in the whole um I, I kind of gone back and listened to um during the especially during i was driving down north carolina um a few weeks ago and i was listen. i made emily listen to um from start to ready to die from start to finish and uh and i've been like really entrenched in like sort of like a definitely like a dark like all of biggie's like dark very dark songs like because I can definitely see a lot of Eminem inspiration in the in the Biggie, uh, his yeah, like Who Shot Ya and like Dead Wrong and that kind of thing, like the sort of like the very grimy um, songs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Biggie's not really one of the people I'm listening to today, but who are you listening? Who are you listening to like now? Three days ago, uh, I listened to Frank Ocean, Drake, still Kanye, a lot of guys from Atlanta, obviously. Um, Corday. Uh, Corday is amazing. His new album last summer was amazing. Yeah, He's... and then a couple, couple local guys. Um, but really, I just look for in music a feeling, mm -hmm. something that I can relate to, something that I feel is real and not just um, marketable. I guess you know, you know Corday went real to Towson. Yeah, or he gra he dropped out of Towson. How was Kunle? You said Kunle. Oh no 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 Corday. Cordae. He dropped out of Cordae. a Towson. Kunle's doing good though. I was just at his house a few weeks ago. Yeah, he did he did the little uh, my little intro song. Yeah, he's he still making the, music, uh, right? Yeah, he's still making music. He uh, it's really good. He just got a CPA. Um and I think he's back on uh doing some music stuff. I think I think he's got some stuff coming. I really I uh you know he's pretty he's pretty private with the um I th you know when he puts out projects. Um, yeah, he really But is. it's it's always exciting when he does cuz you don't know like uh you never know when that's But I'm very, coming. yeah, I'm very surprised. I love his, I really do love his stuff. He's very talented. He's yeah. such a hard worker. Man. Another guy we went to high school with, his name is Kunle, son of Reagan. Uh, that's one of the things I actually think I learned from him. His, the way he presented information about himself was, I really wasn't, thought that was cool. Wasn't Shy Glizzy at our graduation? Shy Glizzy was at our senior night basketball game, my senior night basketball Maybe, game. Maybe, or no, he was at that. Yeah, he was at the basketball game, but I, then he was also at. Yeah, oh no, it was. I think it was because it was Terrell's graduation. Because because Shy Glizzy is Terrell's cousin. Yeah. Yeah, fascinating. Extremely fascinating. Small um, world. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely a small world for sure. Speaking of the world, I kind of have a big question for you. Oh sure. I guess this is kind of about Dick Kid. This is yeah. about when. This is about Jamie. Oh for sure. With everything going on in 2020, obviously Corona, but yeah. racial issues yeah. and things like that, uh, how do you see 
using your platform, whatever platform that can be, mm-hmm. to bring light to, to these issues, to these issues, to people going through these issues. Yeah. Anything like that? Do you just think about that? Yeah, I no, I think I that, feel like it's something that. Yeah. Every day, we kind of see something that we can do more, or we we have to take a look at ourselves and say, "All right, I know I can do more." Yeah. And that be the change you want to see. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I I think in terms of I guess every. You know, every every everyone has a responsibility to, to pursuing that pursuing change, and I think having those having those uncomfortable conversations, especially, or even having these conversations right now of evaluating your own, you know, I I think this whole, this whole year has been very reflective of, it's been, I've been able to kind of sit back and think about my own implicit biases, think about things that I need to work through myself and think about how I can use my, like you said, like use my platform to um, bring light to um, these issues. I mean, even um, this whole um, the whole Breonna Taylor thing, like you, there was no there was no justice at all done there. There was, you know, you, you see the memes going around. The drywall got more justice than Breonna than Breonna Taylor did. Um, mm-hmm. And I think for me, I struggle with how do I go about how do I go about doing it the best way? Like, and how do I? What's my role as a? Um, what's my role as a? like white person in society with a platform to talk about these things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, oh my bad. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I got to get closer to the mic. Um, no, as, as but, and, it, say. and it's a shame too, man. Like I think like growing up, like, cause I'm a Christian, I'm still a Christian, but unfortunately mm-hmm. our Christianity in America, unfortunately is it's definitely cloaked in white supremacy for sure. And um, I think, it, especially conservative con- conservatism, like it's very, um, pro- it's unfortunate how closely linked Christianity and um, the Republican Party is. Like that, I don't, I don't understand the correlation. I don't understand why they're so linked. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's very troubling for sure, um, and it's. You know, I I think people often forget that Jesus was a man of color. He was not, um, he was, he was not a white, he was not a white, a white person, you know? You can say that as many times as you want. Yeah. So, um, it's a good question. I, I I don't know. I I wrestle with it. I Mm -hmm. think, um, I think I, um, am trying to become, uh, better at understanding and I need to be better at like listening too. And then leading by example, I guess, with your platforms. For sure, yeah. yeah for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for yeah. those words. That means a lot. Yeah. You spoke on it. You're a Christian. And, um, yeah. So am I. We went to a Christian school. And uh, a mutual friend of ours kind of gave a great idea for a topic, I guess, just mm. to kind of talk about... We went to high school, what, 2011 or 2015, it was, I guess? Uh, I uh, know it was. Uh, we went to sixth grade, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, yeah, so yeah, yeah. High school was yeah, twenty eleven. Grade all the way to twelfth yeah. grade. Um, yeah. How do you, if if any, do you mm-hmm. feel any change from having that teacher tell you, oh, this is what you should do for your faith, and then once you get into the world yourself and you kind of not get to decide for yourself because there's still, you know, the Bible there and uh-huh. other things like that. But now you're the person you have to be responsible. Yeah. Uh, do you? Yeah. Uh, do you mean like? And once you learn other things. Yeah. About religion, other religions. Yeah, like you graduate. Yeah. So you're saying like kind of like you you're kind of told this one thing all throughout your life. This is the way things are supposed to be, and then you graduate, and your eyes are opening to different philosophies. And well, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I yeah. I mean, it's it's weird. Um, yeah. Because I think, growing up, there was definitely aspects of you know. Again, like like I mentioned, the you know unfortunately conservative conserv cons- conservatism conserv conservatism. I know what you mean. <laughs> the, unfortunately, like the Republican Party and Christianity have been so entrenched for some reason, and it's very it's very puzzling. But you know, I think growing up, I was taught all of these things, mm-hmm. and um, again, even I think American Christianity really means well, but it's also in 
entrenched in the white supremacy that we talked about. And so I think uh, graduating, yeah, I, I think definitely just like going to college and going to the HUC and University of Maryland, I feel like learning, I, you know, I, I'd been exposed to things that I'd never, ideas that I'd never heard of. Like, I, I, yeah. you know, um, people think, you know, like, you know, growing up, I was always taught, um, uh, oh, you know, Malcolm X, that's bad. He would, he didn't do anything for the civil rights movement when that's not the case at all. Malcolm X was a very prominent leader in the civil rights movement. You, you know, you're taught like the, I was taught younger, oh, the black Panthers, they, um, you know, they're very militant. They're very destructive. And yeah, sure. There's aspects of militant within the black Panthers, but they also invented the free breakfast in America that they, they started the, in communities. They, they, you know, they founded that. And so I, I think, it's, it's, it's weird. I think, I, I mean, I, I think I wrestle with, I wrestle with, uh, the corruption going on in the church. Mm -hmm. And I think we're definitely getting to a point right now where a lot of young people <clears throat> are, are upset in yeah. there because the church is not reflecting their, um, their, their moral ideologies. And I think there's, we're seeing a lot more young people, um, leaving the church. Um, yeah. and is it a good or bad? I mean, it's, it's sad, but it's a weird, I don't know. What, what about you? What, what, how is your, what has your faith been like after you graduated? Yeah, I guess really what I was curious of is that change of, cause we were at school, we're taught this yeah. and then we go, uh, for me, I went to a Catholic college. So now I'm learning other religions and uh -huh. I just, the way I am, I feel you should always be able to look at things open-minded yeah. and find the good and the bad. And if there's bad, then you should react appropriately, I suppose. Uh -huh. um, so when I was hearing about all these other religions, I kind of like took all that in. Yeah. But ultimately, I just felt like learning about all the religions, I just kind of saw that at the end of it all, the main premises or the main premise of all the religions is really love, mm -hmm. caring about others, and self-growth. Mm -hmm. So I guess now it's a huge change with the way I even look at Christianity because yeah. I feel like in high school, it was an agenda. There were certain teachers where I felt the agenda was less, but yeah. obviously I felt there were more, and I, I'm not calling that corruption right but you felt like it was pushed on you yeah like you felt like somewhat. it was forced in a way yeah 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 mm. um yeah but i mean that's their job i just personally think my religion definitely or my faith definitely grew once i had to see it for myself almost do you meditate at all i i um i don't it's so crazy you just asked yeah me i've been learning I, I about started, it a lot recently and it's very doing good that every once in a while really? i did it in college uh my teacher made me do it actually in the beginning of class and for like a homework project we had to do it but uh yeah i just started doing that it's yeah the, cool. apparently I, I was i was watching joe rogan apparently he does like these breath exercises like every oh, yeah. morning for like 45 minutes or something and uh apparently it's really good for anxiety and uh and you know all that like you've been trying it i tried a little bit okay. um I actually, I was just talking about this with my friend. Um, yeah, I have a few friends that are doing it now. It's tough. I get distracted very easily, so I need to. Yeah, yeah it's tough. I, tell, I get. I tell. Yeah, yeah. But you know, oh, this is fascinating. And sorry, I hope I'm not cutting you off. No, the, I um. Go on. Uh, had been getting really into this um, this therapy therapy called MDMA therapy, and it is a fascinating thing. Apparently, it's not legal in the U.S. yet, but they're using you know M, you know MDMA. It's basically like the prescription mm -hmm. yeah. ecstasy, yeah. yeah, yeah and and but but apparently it's having incredible effects on veterans with PTSD, like really bad PTSD, and just anyone with who's struggling with PTSD. You apparently you you go through these guided sessions, like three sessions within a year. With like to, a shaman. Yeah, uh, they so yeah, there is stuff with shaman. I've heard of stuff like they do that like that stuff in like Peru and stuff. Wow. I have heard of that stuff. Uh, apparently that can that actually has is very effective as well, but. Um, but the MDMA stuff, you 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 like fast for like three days. You go in with a therapist, and then you do like an intensive like seven to eight hour, um, like seven to eight hour therapy session. You take like 125 milligrams of MDMA, wait an hour, take another 75 milligrams, and 
apparently it has like um i might be saying this wrong i think it's something like a 73 percent like that's effective rate like it's helping a, a lot of people um, lot of, who are yeah. really struggling and yeah um, there's a lot the of trauma uh, and yeah. science behind that they're finding out a lot of things uh, a couple of my friends have told me before apparently micro dosing uh, was it acid or shrooms Shrooms, oh, hallucinogenics yeah, are, are yeah, helpful microdosing too, shrooms yeah. yeah can have positive effects yeah for yeah for trauma yeah I've I've heard that too trauma and PTSD that's fascinating I'm 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 been kind of interested in that too yeah. I talked to this journalist um a couple weeks ago named uh, Ben Anderson really fascinating guy but he he would go into these he would uh he would focus on different countries and he would um tell um he would go and tell stories about different conflicts that were going on or he would um. He, he works for Vice, and uh, they would be doing different segments on things. But because of all the the things that he witnessed, he was experiencing so much trauma and, and mm-hmm. numbness when he would come back. He wasn't curious about anything. He wasn't enjoying anything. And um, but it was really fascinating because he was telling me this story. He was saying that uh, um, he was in a room in Afghanistan with him and his cameraman, and. They were in a house with an IED, but they couldn't, so they couldn't move anywhere because they didn't know where the IED was and wow. it was going to blow up. And wow. there was a suicide bomber he- heading their way. And his cameraman got out on film. He's like, Ben, how do you, how do you feel? And Ben's like, Ben's like, I feel I'm like bored out of my mind, dude. I'm bored. I'm bored as hell. He was bored, dude. Suicide bomber. But, but it was because he had such bad PTSD that um, wow. his That's... brain wasn't reacting the way that it should be. Like it wasn't going wow. into fight or flight mode. And apparently the the ecstasy, I don't, again, I don't know if the science behind it completely. <laughs> hey, I, <laughs> sue me, I'm no scientist. Um, <laughs> Lane, sue me. But, but apparently, um, apparently your brain is like this. It's, it's, like, it's like your brain is like a bush. Okay. No, that's not true. I, <laughs> but apparently, apparently uh, it does something with the neurons where it's like, there's a blockage here because of the trauma and somehow it, it, it repairs that, like it repairs it, like it, like this, like that. Yeah, I just wanted to do Yeah, that yeah, it's like too. this, yeah. Really get a grasp um, on that. Yeah, it's very, it's fascinating, dude. I mean, what, what do you think about, have you talked about, um, I know we were going to talk about this, like did, did you, had you found um, marijuana to be very therapeutic or like help you create and that kind of thing? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I started sparking really when I was sleeping in my car, uh-huh. so, but I, I guess oh gosh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry so about people, your car. Right. It's more so the people around me in that situation, and it was like, uh-huh. I don't know. I guess I played sports growing up, and yeah. that was a big reason why I didn't even like drink or smoke or any of that stuff. But uh, it was always around me, or yeah. not far, not around me, but not far from me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, definitely going through that time. We just, it was just a great combo for life. It was just giving yeah. me. What about mental health, like anxiety? Does it help your anxiety at all? Or I want to say. It makes me paranoid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get very, like I, was, I texted Joe about Joe about it. Like the, uh, I get very, uh, like my, I feel like my throat is closing up. Oh, wow. And I get like really bad panic attacks. Wow. Um, I've had. How many times have you? I've smoked five or six times. I've had uh, two enjoyable experiences. Um, and I think, you know what I think it is? I think because I'm a very anxious person. Mm-hmm. And I think when I'm with, when I was, when I smoke with someone who is also very anxious, um, it, I think it's like a bad combination. And uh, cause it, but, but when I'm with my friend who's like super like emotionally stable, I kind of felt like, at peace and kind of like I was like okay like if anything like I'm, I'm with this guy like I'm fine uh, you know I what see. I mean so it's so it was like it was like a, on the it's, vibe it's, you're in That's yeah really, it's yeah really big whenever you're yeah. doing any kind of anything really have you tried um and I, I I hope I don't know if you're willing to share for the camera um have you tried like LSD or anything like that are you open to to LSD because I've heard those trips last like seven or eight hours and it's uh crazy I've heard I've heard I've heard horror stories and I've heard beautiful stories but so yes i i do have experience with the lsd how's your how's your um, trip most of my trips are very have a different. good trip buddy 
<laughs> and I'll see when you get. I'll see when you get home. <laughs> I've had. I usually have body highs. I'm mm. feeling very energetic. Um, not so much in my head. I do have thoughts, but they uh -huh. usually just come right out. Yeah. It's not so much like thinking about my life and like, oh, is it gonna fall apart or anything yeah. like that? I don't know. Do you see anything weird? Like a I heard definitely, you put your, yeah, your hand in front of your face or something, you can like I see, yeah, I definitely see some weird stuff. Uh this optical illusions really is how I rationalize it in my brain. It's just funny stuff to see, but nah, no bad trips. Honestly, well, I think I have a bad, I, I, not a bad mind. I think I have a, a pretty weird mind. And so like, I, like I get pretty bad night terrors. Like I wake up in the middle of the night and I scream, like for some reason, I don't know why I always scream dad, dad. I scream, I scream dad or help. And, and I usually can't remember what I'm dreaming of. Like sometimes I can, but, but usually I can't. Like, have some, you told anyone about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My oh, yeah? friends, my, a lot of my friends have, uh, like, like you know, we would be have like if we're all sleeping somewhere, like you know, they've 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 experienced it for sure. Why do I feel like I have some memories of staying over your house and hearing? Did I scream or something? Talking in your sleep. I don't think you said help, uh -huh. Dad, but I feel like I definitely remember you talking in your sleep. Have you ever recorded yourself and? No, someone told me to do that actually. Like well, also, I feel like I um. Hmm. Well, I was gonna go to like a um, sleep, uh, not sleep therapy. What is it? Or maybe it was one of those like sleep sleep clinics. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I was gonna just see because I, uh, I feel like, I, I really struggle. Excuse me, I really struggle with getting up early. Mm -hmm. Like I really struggle with it, and I don't know why I'm so tired in the morning. Like I'm always drinking coffee. In the, like I, I don't think I'm coffee dependent because I, uh, I don't get headaches if I don't take it or anything. Like I don't drink it or anything. But like, I'm super. Uh, um, I was talking about what's up. I'm super like. Um, like yeah, just like groggy in the morning, mm -hmm. and so I feel like I was gonna do. I was gonna try and do that. People were like, "Oh, you should go do that, so you can um, see if like you're like." Uh, I think there's something. Some there's something where some people like they don't go to sleep fully. Like they're, they they feel like they're mm -hmm. asleep, but it's like they're. And it's not Inception or something, but I <laughs> I don't know what it is exactly. Inception, I think, is when people come into yeah multiple your dreams. And oh yeah give you an idea yeah right i think so yeah well i was just reception might i mean i was gonna ask you your your thoughts on like therapy if that's something you've done oh for, yeah like, your night tears i've done therapy i was in therapy through um for a year i i just got out of therapy this summer mm -hmm. um but i'm gonna try and find a new therapist mm -hmm. um it's yeah they, i think they say finding therapists is like going through like a six-pack or something like or like drinking the first time you have to like find what what you like best mm -hmm. you know and so i think i i um i like my therapist a lot he's a really good guy in um in uh in jessup he's like he's your typical therapist like big bushy beard like mm -hmm. circle glasses and like <laughs> like lay on the couch and um he would kiss me that's right <laughs> that's <laughs> No man, no man. Sorry, sorry. That just, just kidding. Serious, that didn't. Man. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. You're right. It's a serious. Um, no, mental health sorry. is. No, it's serious. No, mental health is not. It's is a huge, not. It's a huge thing. It's a huge it's thing for sure. You. Um, you but yeah, there was. About it, you talking about it is great because for sure, yeah. There's a lot of people that are going through things and yeah. they might, for whatever reason, feel like they can't express it, or they might feel like people might laugh at them, yeah, or people yeah. might not understand, or might think they're weird. Just. So much going on, but especially during twenty twenty, mental health is exactly. for everyone. Is I'm just hoping that someone sees what you did. And yeah, for sure. They're inspired, and I think everyone should do therapy. I um, do you know? Do you know who? The, do you know who Royce to Five Nine is? I do. I, I um. So I I I in twenty eighteen I had I saw something on Instagram where he was going to go to DTLR, like be on DTLR radio, and uh, so I like drove over to DTLR and he was there he, and. And it was so cool. I got to talk to him for like maybe like fifteen minutes. What was that? And uh, it was amazing, dude. It was right when he he was an alcoholic, and uh, it was right after he um, had just finished therapy for it. And it was really cool, dude. He was saying like Eminem helped him because uh, Eminem's drug addiction. He's really good buddies with Eminem, and so he was saying like Eminem really helped him, uh, you know, encouraged him to like seek help when he, but not in like a pushing, not being like not like a hey man, you really like you need help or something like it was in a uh yeah it was in a way of like it was a very very gentle like nice way 
Um, so that was, dude, he's a real big fan of, or big advocate of mental health is, I know Big Sean was just on Hot 97 talking about, he had a good conversation about mental health. I feel like a lot of people who create tend to have mental health struggles. And I think there's definitely something, it's a, because I think, I'll say this, I think actually, if you're someone who struggles with, and I'm not, I don't, this is going to be out there a little bit, but anxiety, depression are very serious things, very serious things that many people struggle with. Um, and it is really, it is really um, important that we tackle those issues. Um, mm -hmm. I think I found something for, for my anxiety. I feel like it's a, it's a strength and a weakness. Like I feel like it makes my creativity better in a way. I know it sounds I weird. I agree. But because I love, and I think, yeah, I love your, my, some of my favorite music for you is the stuff that is more vulnerable, more like the song you just did, like a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know what I mean? Do you think sure. you find that? Like, do you find that it's harder to be, or maybe this, maybe it's harder to be sat. I feel like it might be harder to be satisfied as someone who's creative. Like, you, I, I feel like I find myself always wanting, I'm not satisfied with the, that. I put something out, it's like, it was cool. Like I'm really in it while I'm doing it, and then I'm like, that was that was. I that definitely, was odd. <clears throat> I definitely think it's a mark of great creatives. Yeah. Always having that job not finish mentality. Mm. Um, once you, honestly, when you create, you should be doing it, hopefully for yourself a little bit. Yeah. And when you do create, when I create, I like to ask myself, do I like this? Yeah. And usually the answer is yes. But as time goes on, I can look back at some of my old songs and definitely, I definitely relate to that feeling of just not satisfied. Looking back at my old stuff and it's like, nah, I can yeah. get better. Um, and when I say old, I really just mean like anything from yesterday and before. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how fast it goes. It's like, oh, I did that yesterday. Like, that's getting old. I need to think of something new today. But that stress of I need to think of something new is probably what leads to thinking of something new, mm -hmm. figuring it out. But uh, Have you, I'm gonna keep. I'm oh, sorry, gonna you keep, don't. I'm gonna keep working on music, and I'm gonna keep thinking of new things. And with everything you're doing with Dick Kid, I want you to keep being creative and thinking of new ways to bring positivity to this world in 2020. And hopefully, very soon, I get you back on the show. Yeah, man, that's been great. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. I uh, yeah, follow Dick Kid. Uh, don't have to follow if you don't want to. It's a bit. Um, it's out there. It's nuts. It's uh, it's fun. It's um, it's scary at times. Like I don't like. Sometimes I look. At, sometimes I see it. And I'm like, I gotta, gotta cover my eyes. Scary. Um, but um, Lane, I appreciate you having me. It's, it's really good to uh, hear everything that you're doing and your your open mind. And I'll try and keep an open mind as well. Always a pleasure having. Or a nut mind. <laughs>